Good morning. We're launching from a different spot today. Here we go. My lovely walnut tree. Unfortunately, the walnuts this year are all blighted. They're all black, horrible. So I don't think we'll be eating many of those. So it's got it's a typical autumnal day today. Poor visibility, very low white cloud. Good for filming though. It's Friday morning. We've done uh, two days this week, Monday and Wednesday. That's our now going on Friday morning. Now steady on, angry, steady on, you might say. What's well, so, the, you know, don't overdo things. <laughs> Working two and a half days a week. So I'm like, okay. What's the point? If you've only got two and a half days worth of patience, then why bother spreading them out over five days? You know what I mean? Now, the reason why I say that is because we can do something that perhaps you can't, which is that we divert the phone through to a mobile and the person who's got that mobile has got dial-in access to the work computer. So if someone rings in and says, uh, you know, rings in and they'll pick up the phone, hello, first impressions, blah, blah, blah. How can I help? And they say, I'd like to make an appointment or blah, blah, blah. And they'll, you know, be dialed in. And they'll say, uh, yeah, yeah, I can do that. You're at nine o'clock or 12 o'clock, whatever. And then they make it and they hang up. Now the person doesn't know well, some people do know because they go down to surgery and find all the lights off. But that person doesn't know that, that they haven't got through to the place that they normally think of as the surgery when they visit. But we've got a we've got a decentralized surgery. We've got we're providing dentistry as a service, DAAS. And uh, in the meantime, you know, I mean the and because everything's done by email. There aren't that many phone calls, to be honest. You know, there's not many, not many people do ring up and make appointments. They all just uh, email us, and uh, and then we deal with it. You know, well, we deal with it pretty quickly. I mean, even like 24 hours. Uh, it's un it's unusual, quite unusual for me to reply to someone at four o'clock in the morning. But I can't say I've never done it. Um, so you've got a good chance if you email us of getting an email reply back pretty damn quick. Certainly email because emails come through to me as well as to the work phone and so uh, you know you've got two sets of eyeballs on it. So so you know there's two uh, there's several ways of sort of immediately responding to this so let me try and anticipate uh, what you're saying. Well, you might be thinking, not angry, you know, why are you paying for all this equipment five days a week when you're only using it two and a half days a week? You know, this is underutilization of uh, capital. And uh, I agree. I mean, you know, we could sweat the capital a bit more. The problem is the biggest bit of capital is me. And so, uh, you know, I could say to you, like, I don't know, you might be that you do work seven days a week, but... You're, you know, the equipment there's seven days a week. Why aren't you open seven days a week? And the answer is you can't work seven days a week. You have to personally just decide for yourself what you want to do in terms of working. Hello? That's all right, matey. I'll wait for you. After this white car, I'll try and get round him because that's it. We don't want to get caught behind him around these wiggly bends. So, yeah, so, I mean, at the moment, I'm 65, I'm drawing my NHS pension, and I'm, I'm very happy with the number of days I'm working. And uh, the, other, the other way of looking at it is to say, well, why aren't you busy? You know, every other dentist in the country is booked up two months, three months ahead, he's turning patients away, 
telling patients in pain that they can have antibiotics for a couple of months and then giving them a filling appointment which, you know, or, or an extraction appointment which then gets cancelled two or three times. You know, what's, what's personally, what's wrong with you as a dentist that means that you're so unpopular, you know, to want of a better word. And uh, I think the answer to that is that, first of all, I would say we are more efficient than most dentists. I think we do, like you take, for example, the fact that we run on time. I mean, I can't remember the last time we didn't see a patient within like a minute of their appointment time. So that uh, involves obviously less, um, it involves a certain mentality, which is necessary to see people on time, which is that you will underbook people. You know, uh, if a dentist came to me and said, I can't run on time, or my associates, more commonly they say, my associates can't run on time, what, what would you do? I would say there are two things. One is you need to, well, three, you need to commit to running on time, um, and you need to uh, book fewer patients so that there is a chance that at the end of the previous appointment you'll be hanging around waiting for the next person, but at least you will see them on time. And then the third thing is to develop techniques of finishing on time, such as saying to a patient, you know, I said that I could do this root treatment in one visit, but it's turned out to be more difficult than I thought. So I'm going to um, put a temporary filling in, some Crestphine cotton wool cabinet, and um, which literally takes 30 seconds. And uh, I'll, um, we'll have to get you to come back in the meantime. It'll be fine in the meantime, but I'll just need to, um, it's just taken longer than I thought because it's more difficult, but it won't affect the cost. You know, you know your, the cost is fixed, but uh, it, it requires more work, which we're happy to put the work in for you. And so that's one way that we're different. Efficiency. Um, we use our computer system to the full extent. We push it above and beyond what it's supposed to do, right? And by by beyond, I mean, I was doing a, writing a letter to someone the other day and I wanted to put a table in the word processor document and uh, there wasn't a button to insert a table. So I'm sure it's just an oversight, but there wasn't, there just wasn't one. And so what I did was I opened another document, a different type of document into which you could insert a table and I inserted and designed the table in that document and then I cut it out of that document and I pasted it into the other document and I didn't know that was going to work but hey presto it worked I had a table in the document for the very first time <laughs> including probably in development I had a table in that first type of document that had never ever been possible so that's what I mean when I say pushing stuff beyond on the limit. Now I'm not saying that you you know you necessarily would have the technical expertise perhaps to do that and or need it but um, you know, I had somebody in the other day uh, was with you know pretty well pretty badly neglected teeth but coming to a bit of money as usual parents have died or something we don't ask and uh, wanted to she was quite funny because uh, in her email request, she said she wants to order a new mouth. And that's, I've never heard, really heard anyone use that phrase, well, I'd like to order a new mouth. And that, I thought that was quite funny. And that's an indication of a sense of humor, isn't it, on behalf of a patient. That's only, only a patient with a sense of humor would write to a dentist and say that they've never, they don't know and they've never spoken to before and say, I'd like to order a new mouth. And so, um, <laughs> so we sort of rang her back and said, um, you know, uh, we've had a we've had something come through from the internet, and someone's someone's ordered a new mouth in the same way as uh, someone might ring up and say, um, uh, "You've put an order in for a new uh, <laughs> washing machine or dishwasher or something," and so and she was all like, "Yeah, that's me, that's me." So she recognised that I've got the same sort of sense of humour as her. And I said, well, just tell me what the problem is. So apparently she'd been to a, another dentist, private dentist. Now this is a woman who's got half a dozen teeth up the top, which are, of which only one is worth saving. So 
so we're probably going to have a general clearance up top and then um, and some lower teeth of which you know some are decayed and or loose and therefore are goners but some others there are always some others which are you know might last another two years five years whatever and would be useful to stabilize the lower denture so um, so I said to Elena will, will uh, she, she came in with this quote and it's on one page it's literally a page it's literally just the uh, treatment plan in dentist language with with all the fees listed They're literally like a spreadsheet and a total no information about anything no information about anything no introduction no summary of her mouth in layman's terms no uh, information about the condition of her gums no uh, information about extractions after care uh, dentures after care uh, payment methods accepted uh, terms and conditions you know about all treatment being done on a best effort basis um, and so I said to her look I'll, I'll send you a quote I said how much were you thinking of paying now I don't like I don't like asking that question because when I'm going to buy something I don't like people saying to me well how much do you want to pay because the answer to that is I don't want to pay anything I want you to pay me uh, you know it's get very suspicious when people ask you that question but she was quite open and honest and said, you know, I think this 4,200 I was quoted was too much. I was thinking more two and a half, three thousand. So I'm thinking to myself, well, look, if we can get this done for two and a half thousand, then we've got a sale, haven't we? Because that's what you're doing. You're selling, okay? I know a lot of dentists are going to say, no, you're not. It's a healthcare industry. You're not selling. You mustn't sell, etc., etc." But that all that means is they don't understand sales. What you've got to do is you've got to read uh, read a bit of Richard Denny, read about uh, you know uh, guerrilla marketing tactics, and read a bit of um, uh, the best book you can read is the Principles of Service Sector Marketing by Adrian Palmer, uh, latest edition. And if you read that, it'll uh, in the same way as uh, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, transform your sex life. Uh, Principles of Service Sector Marketing won't do so much for your sex life but it'll do wonders for your dentistry. So when you start, you can finally get over yourself being a dentist and just realize that you're in the, the service sector, like so many other people are in the service sector, you know, like cinemas and prostitutes and all sorts of other people in the service sector. So, so anyway, <clears throat> So my, my objective at that point was to really to see whether we could do what she needed to a high standard, to our high standard, and still have any change left out of two and a half grand. Now, it's complicated somewhat by the fact that we've got this uh, bloody full full case pending in front of the dental complaint service, which I'll come back to in a minute where this woman who's never ever worn a set of dentures in her life, lost her teeth really young, came to us with a set of dentures that had a load of technical problems. I told her that I could fix the technical problems, but I can't, I can't make her wear the dentures. You know, she'd have to do that herself. She then wore them for a couple of weeks, declared that she couldn't wear them and wanted her money back. Now she's then complained to the DCS. And uh, basically the DCS, now, okay, let's do let's do the DCS now, right? So, I put in a freedom of information request to the DCS because when they write you a letter, they say, "Oh, we've had the, we've received a complaint," and and I think their written stuff is completely wrong. They say, "We received a complaint from such and such a patient regarding some dentures. Uh, can you please send us the notes and a copy of any correspondence?" Now. That gives the impression that this is a further stage in the complaints process. And I think that they are happy with that. I think they want dentists to think that that is a further stage in the complaints process. But in fact, what they do is they review your how you've dealt with a complaint. In other words, they, they look and they say, has he replied within time? Has he answered the patient's complaint? 
Um, okay. And the letter that they send out says that they, they resolve a large number of complaints through a, a full or partial refund. Now, I'm sitting there thinking, well, what about no refund? You know, how many complaints do you resolve with no refund? Because the patient is, doesn't deserve a refund because they've not, you know, they, they've ordered a custom made appliance and then they've simply rejected it on the grounds that they don't like it and it doesn't work like that. <coughs> it's a bit like a designer. So if you hire a designer, supposing you're going to put a new uh, surgery in, and uh, but you want it to stand out, really stand out locally. So what you do is you hire a designer, not an architect or a builder, but a designer to design it. Um, and you can't go to that designer and say, show me what you're going to do. Because that's the work. As far as they're concerned, that's their intellectual property. What they're going to do is, is you don't get to see that until the process is finished. You might get involved a bit, but it's not, you know, you can't say like I want to see the finished product. So, and it's the same with dentures. You're, what you do when you're making a denture, to a certain extent, you're hiring a dentist on the basis of what you've heard about them, uh, other stories and success stories that you've heard, their local reputation, and possibly what you know you see in the surgery, whether you like it, whether you think they're friendly, etc., etc. You don't then uh, get a chance to turn around and say. Now I hired you to make something, you made it, and now I I'm, I'm, don't want it, I'm going to reject it, I want my money back. But that's precisely what this woman's done. Anyway, what happens is, the dental complaint service is not so much a complaint service as a review service. You send them all that stuff, and then they try and mediate, right? They try and mediate between you and the patient. And I know damn well what sort of mediation they're going to do. They're going to write to me and say, uh, you know, would you be prepared to refund the money? There won't be any chance of remedial work because this woman is never going to come back, and you know, and I'm not going to make her another set of dentures. So uh, it's gone past that. There was a point at which she could have come back for an unlimited number of times, and I would have sorted her out. But not now that she's, not now she's um, made a formal complaint. And that's you know, it's that's we're past that stage now. So and they're, so they're going to say. Or they're going to say, look, we think this, would you be prepared to make a partial refund? Because we've got the patient to say that they will accept a partial refund. Like, for example, 90% or something. And I'm going to say, no, you know, I'm not, I, 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 these dentures, I stand by these dentures. They're made to a high standard. She's not alleging negligence in any aspect of them. She just says, she just says she's disgusted with them. <laughs> God. And then. And I was on the end of the phone to dentists for years, ringing me up saying, this bloody patient, she's an old cow, she's an old boat, she's an old bag. And I'm like, yeah. So I'm trying to take my own advice. I'm trying to, what I used to say to people, look, you've got to get past the emotional side of this. You, I know you're taking it personally. Someone says they're disgusted with you. It's very, very personal. Disgusted with you, disgusted with your behaviour, disgusted with your work. That very word is, is very hard not to take that personally. So, it's a sausage machine. What you have to do is you just have to understand how it works. And how it works is, I would imagine almost always, the DCS says we are going to recommend a, a full or partial refund, which is exactly what they say in their letter. And that's how they resolve it. And they resolve it on those on those grounds because they more or less think that a dentist can afford to take a financial hit. Well, what's one less denture to a dentist over over a year, for example? Whereas this is might be the only denture this patient's had made in the last four years. I mean, I severely doubt it. I think she's probably getting one one made every six months. But you know, the the uh, the, the it's an uneven playing field. It's tipped towards. The patient because they're like but dentists are all rich aren't they we're all rich we cannot afford we can afford to take a financial hit to keep the peace and most mediation services work on the basis if they upset both sides equally then um then they've done their job but the problem the problem with upsetting both sides equally in a case like this is that i'm out some expense and she's not 
So if they say, well, we're going to upset both sides equally by suggesting a refund of half the cost, then <coughs> I know she's done half the cost for a denture she says she can't wear, that she might now be wearing for all I know. But I, I can't make, I can't afford to make dentures that I might have to refund half the cost. And that's the problem I've got with the quote. You know, I'm thinking, okay, two and a half thousand to make make full, full IR. Is it, you know, which, if it turns out to be 1,250, then it's not, it's not doable. You know, it's not tenable. So you send your stuff off to the DCS and then they, they sort of, they try and mediate, and if the dentist is intractable, which I intend to be, then um, what they do is they then refer it to a panel because the mediators don't know anything about it. clinical dentistry. They just try and say, look, you know, can't we all be reasonable here? Can't we not think of a way that, you know, everyone could go away from this and, and just think, well, it's water under the bridge, you know? Well, if they can't do that, then they just declare the failure and they refer it to a thing called a panel. And a panel is, um, contains I think one dentist I think it's three people there's either one or two dentists I think possibly even only one but um, I can't see how a lay person on a panel like that is not going to say just give the patient their money back you know the patients <laughs> bought something it they didn't like it it didn't work just give them a refund and uh, and so you know you're on a losing wicket there from the start aren't you in fact, what has happened is uh, this freedom of information request I put in, uh, because incredibly, incredibly, the General Dental Council Dental Complaint Service does not keep track of how complaints are settled uh, on the day-to-day -day basis uh, by, by the mediators. The, the uh, track record of the mediators is not tracked. <laughs> so. So that we don't know how the vast majority, because the, and it is the vast majority, because there are something like 11 panel referrals in five years. So we're talking about two a year, and you compare that to the volume of complaints they get, either they're, they're Jesus H. Christ in terms of reconciling people, or uh, they've got this, <clears throat> they've got another way of doing it, which is the way I describe, which is saying to the dentist, give them their money back or you're going to end up on a panel and most dentists will say all right have your effing money back so the panel decisions are for the most part um i think i'm not going to i'm not going to misrepresent this so i'm going to do my memory but if i've got it wrong i will flash up on the video what's going on i think it's something like six six full refunds for no, uh, for no refunds, or for oh no, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna flash it up. Anyway, there, there are very few that go to a panel, and the DCS is all like, oh well, <clears throat> you know, but that's, you know, we we are, we we just make a recommendation. That's the thing. This is where they're mealy mouth, and they know they're lying, and they then they lie nevertheless. They say, oh well, we just make a recommendation, and our recommendation isn't binding, you know. It's only a recommendation, you know, we're only like an arbitration service. We make a recommendation, you follow it, you follow it, you don't, you don't. What they fail to say is that if you don't follow their recommendation, they will refer you to the General Dental Council. And if you ask them that outright, which I did, they will say, well, yeah, yeah, that is, that is how it works. <laughs> you don't, you don't follow our recommendation, the panel recommendation then we will refer you to the General Dental Council, not on the grounds that you make lousy dentures, but on the grounds that you're not following the, uh, the, the considered advice of the Dental Complaint Service. In other words, you're a, you're a rogue dentist who wants to operate outside the rules. And that's what they'll, um, you know, I think that's what you'll end up facing charges of, being, being contrary, not making bad dentures. I don't know. I don't know, even know whether they'll consider the dentures, the GDC. I don't know whether they'll get an expert to look at the dentures. They'll just say, 
what's the next case? Next case is a, uh, angry. He's not. He went to the DCS and they told him what they thought and he said, no, I'm not going to do it. And so, and, and so he's acting unprofessionally. And so we're, that's, we're going to strike him off for acting unprofessionally. But, um, yeah, so, so anyway, cut a long story short, we managed to um, accommodate this woman, um, but within the two and a half, assuming we don't have to do a complete refund. But then, I'm still continuing to accept new dentures all the time that um, this case is pending. But the minute I have to refund a penny on this other case, then, then the full dentures will stop. But at the moment, I'm still doing them. And I am emphasizing to the patient. I'm going out my way to say to the patient, this is a custom device. You will not get refunded. If you do not like this, don't ask for your money back. Because we will make our, on a best efforts basis to make this denture, we'll make it to a high standard. <coughs> it will be technically very correct. And and as a result, if you, if you take it and you then decide that you don't, you don't like it, or, or uh, you'd like to see if another dentist could make you a different set and you want to use the money you gave to me to, to pay him, then, then you can forget it. No refunds. That's my mantra now. No refunds. And I'm making sure I put it in the note. No refunds. No refunds. So we'll wait and see. I mean, it could be that it's a, it's a one-off, uh, very um, very rare event, this DCS complaint. I'm, I think it is because the woman was, you know, she's a... But um, with hindsight, you can always see these people with hindsight, can't you? Never see them coming in advance. I should have just said no. I know, but but you know, we, none of, we've all been there. We've all said yes when we should have said no, shouldn't we? Okay, so I've got two children as a result. Right, okay, nice to talk to you, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.